200 millimeter fans felt like a paradigm shift in the industry. Back when they were big with the Cooler Master Half X, the NZXT Phantom 820, the Rosewell Thor and Throne cases, and Silverstone's 180 millimeter variants in the Raven 02. That trend mostly died and has recently been somewhat revitalized by the Cooler Master H500P, which contains the Master Fan MF200R units. Noctua also shipped their new 200mm fans called the NFA20s, and so it feels as if there is somewhat of a resurrection of what was attempted a few years ago. Today we're testing the Noctua NFA20s versus the Cooler Master MF200R fans, including some brief tests in the H500P. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our coffee lake temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. For anyone who was into PC building a couple years ago, you probably remember the 200mm fans being basically everything. At least all the big cases had them. A lot of NDXT stuff, Cooler Master cases, uh, Fantex cases had some, the Enermax cases had some. So they were making their rounds. But before we get into the review, you really have to look at a couple of things, which is why did they come about, what were the positives, and why did they go away? So that we can understand why, for a couple of years at least, almost no cases had 200mm fans, and they've suddenly come back with the H500P, which is somewhat building on a legacy of the half series, and then now Noctua with their own 200mm fans. So there's a resurgence here. So let's talk about that. Part of the reasons they went away were cost being one of the big ones. They're expensive to make and they're expensive to buy as a consumer. Part of the reason they're expensive is because obviously the size, but more than that, in order to uh, keep the fan operating within spec and make sure it doesn't uh, have weighting issues or off balance issues, you have to spend money on the material quality, have to spend more money on the hub, the motor and the bearings, because if that motor and those bearings are carrying these bigger blades, that's more weight that causes strain on the fan, on the bearing and on the motor. Uh, so this is something we spoke with some of the engineers about, why they moved away from those fans, and that was more or less one of the, the bigger issues. So you could get them cheaper, but you have the issue of potentially blades uh, snapping. We had some of that happen on the old NZXT fans before they had a Gen 2 come out, or of just the motor dying out or wobbling as it spins, for example. Another reason that they went away was the uh, the form factor of the fans. So even on these fans, they have two mounting holes, two sets of mounting positions for the fans. Cooler Master has two sets as well. And there are a couple other form factors out there for large fans. There's a kind of weird one that Silverstone largely exists in, which is 180 with their uh, air penetrator fans from the Raven case. And there's a couple, there's at least one other 200-ish sized fan that has its own set of mounting holes. So this meant that there was not a lot of standardization between the cases, which meant that because the manufacturers didn't really agree on how they should be mounted and where the mounting holes should be positioned, you had issues of incompatibility. And now when we're in an age where customizing is at the forefront, look at things like RGB LEDs, for example, and all the tempered glass, incompatibility doesn't necessarily fly. So that was a big problem too. And then another one is just cases moving away from a cooling focus and moving away from big mesh panels and trying to get back to closed off paneling. Uh, sleek is kind of the big buzzword to throw around, things like that. So the industry's moved away. The pros of these fans, they're larger, so they can move a lot more air because they're cut through a bigger hole, obviously, in the case. And this means that you can run them at lower RPMs. They're quieter, as a lot quieter in some cases, but they move a lot of air. And that air is also over a wide spread of just uh, over the whole case. So if you have a side panel that's got a 200 millimeter fan in it, that's very nearly the size of your motherboard. You, it's great for cooling the GPU. It's gonna get some cooling on the VRMs as well, if you have an AIO or a CLC, and uh, will help out pretty much everything in the case. So that's a big positive. So that's most of the upshot. In the original deployments, these were against metal mesh paneling, so we're gonna be using some of that today in our testing. To go over what we're looking at, the Noctua NFA20, this one costs $30 right now. The master fan isn't yet available separately, but probably will be at some point. It's what's in the H500P now. 
And based on other master fan RGB prices standalone, we would assume that would also be $30 to $40. So they should be pretty direct comparison. The master fan also is crazy on the RGB. Now, this fan has no LEDs at all. It's just, I mean, putting LEDs on this would be kind of pointless anyway. <laughs> you look at it. Uh, so they're very different in how they look, which means they kind of focus on different markets. You don't buy this because you want it to look good. You buy it because you want it to look like Noctua, I guess. And there's something to be said for that as well, because there are plenty of people who like to have that Noctua look, because I guess uh, to some extent Noctua has done very well to market themselves as a, a sort of an engineering focused brand, and they've now associated this color with that. So if you like that look, then obviously you're not going to get that with Cooler Master. As for how we tested, we have a, we actually have a wind tunnel now. We're not using it for these fans because they're too big for it, but we will be using it soon. So keep an eye out for a, a big fan roundup that we're doing with wind tunnel testing. But uh, what we're doing instead is similar to what we did for the Noctua China made versus Taiwan made fans. We have an anemometer that allows us to take measurements in linear feet per minute. And we're positioning that on the outside of a case side panel. So we're using a thrown side panel with mesh on the side. It has native 200 millimeter fan support. It supports the mounting holes for all the fans uh, that we have presently, and we're only testing two today. So we mount the fan to that, push the air through the panel, and then take a reading of that airspeed on the other side. And that gives us our LPM, or if you prefer FPM reading, which is linear feet per minute. We are also testing for noise. We're testing LPM at every RPM range in steps of 10%, so 30 to 100, or 40 to 100, we lose resolution after that. And we're testing the noise at many of the same intervals, but we have a noise floor of 26 dBA, so below that, you get no reading, basically. You read the room noise at that point. And then finally, we have a noise normalized chart for the LPM as well. So let's get through it. We're gonna start with the linear feet per minute flow. We'll look at normalized noise, the noise after that. Starting with the LPM chart now, we're looking at a range of 40% to 100% for which we'll have matching RPM numbers in the article link in the description below. The Noctua fan pushed air at 423 linear feet per minute at 100% RPM, a lead over the Cooler Master fan 378 LPM. Keep in mind that these gains don't necessarily translate directly and especially not linearly to performance uplift in a real system. Airflow is complex, so it's not a linear scale to convert LPM gains to temperature gains, for example. At the low end of the RPM range, from 40 to 60%, Cooler Master retained a lead, but those speeds are low enough that you're really not moving much air anyway and not doing a whole lot of cooling. At 40%, we're at 145 to 160 LPM, with a breeze weak enough that there won't be much appreciable change in component performance with either of these two fans. The two tie at 70%, matching at 275 LPM, and to really get an idea of how this compares, we can do noise normalized tests next. These noises represent various RPMs. We can show those in a moment. At roughly 34.5 dBA, plus or minus 0.5, the Noctua fan pushes 424 LPM, where Cooler Master does 334 LPM. At 33 dBA, we're running 386 LPM on Noctua, and 302 on Cooler Master. 31 dBA has us at 316 versus 275 LPM for Noctua and Cooler Master respectively. As for where those noise levels were chosen, here's the noise chart overall. And the rough 34.5 dBA range comes as a middle point between the 100% RPM Noctua fan and 90% RPM Cooler Master fan, which run at roughly 34.9 and 34.4 dBA respectively. Our testing scales down to about 26.9 dBA, and this is where we no longer have test resolution. The noise floor of the room is about 26 decibels, and we disable all system fans, so it is not possible for us to test below this noise floor, and we also lose accuracy as we approach 26. The Noctua fan remains generally ahead, but has a wider acoustic performance lead at the low end. If you recall, Cooler Master had a bit of an LPM lead at the same low end for its tests, so these would mesh with those noise findings. And just quickly, here's an RPM chart that shows the RPM to PWM response or RPM to percent response in terms of the 100% versus 40% scaling on each fan if you want to see how fast those go. Then as for temperatures, 
Blender GPU testing often had our difference within margin of error and test resolution with a maximum change of about 1 degree Celsius. The Blender CPU test shows about the same. Testing 3D Mark Firestrike, we saw the Noctua fans were generally about 1 to 2 degrees advantaged for GPU temperatures, so not that exciting. So for the H500P that we tested and controlled testing with a, a lot of different tests between them, we're not seeing a huge difference, certainly not one that if you wanted extra performance, you should go buy the fans for. And I should mention, uh, as stated a moment ago, this was for the H500P mesh mod. So we actually made it easier for the case to breathe and uh, it's still got to be some static pressure performance for the fans, some optimization for static pressure because it's fighting that front mesh. But uh, basically, we're not seeing a huge change with this particular setup. It's possible that with different setups, you would see more of an uplift with Noctua versus Cooler Master. The bigger difference is looking at the noise to RPM or the noise to LPM change because at 100%, we're seeing kind of roughly the same performance favoring Noctua one to two degrees max, but Noctua can run at the, uh, can maintain the same LPM flow as the Cooler Master unit with a, a slightly lower fan speed and also a lower noise level. So it really, what this comes down to is less raw performance at max RPMs and more of performance and consistency of performance as you decrease the RPM to better accommodate noise needs. They're pretty quiet already at 100%, but if you wanted them quieter, you could step down Noctua further while retaining more performance, theoretically, depending on the case, of course, and, uh, and then you would be able to get a better noise normalized result than with Cooler Master, for example. They're not gonna be that far apart though in performance. It really is, it comes down to Noctua is a little bit quieter, Cooler Master has RGB LEDs and comes with the H500P. So those are two things to consider. As for the Cooler Master fans in general, we noticed that our fans wobble a bit and a lot of you noticed this in the review as well. We never mentioned it in that H500P review, but the, uh, particularly the one fan we were testing, which was 50% of our sample size from Cooler Master, uh, wobbles kind of like a bike wheel that's out of true. So you'll see it just, sort of, I don't know, it just, it moves around about the axis as if it's off weighted or just not fully centered or something like that. And that's what actually creates some of the noise difference because that wobbling, which exists on both samples, uh, does create some noise. And that's largely where the difference comes in actually. But yeah, that's, uh, that's really it. Pretty simple test in terms of performance. You probably don't really need to pick based on performance. It's just, what do you like the looks of? And the master fan you can't technically buy right now anyway at time of filming, so that's not really an option unless you're just looking to buy the case and then trying to figure out if you should replace the fans. Stay tuned though, we'll have a full fan roundup, 120 and 140 millimeters. Here's what I'd like you to do. If you have a particular fan that you really want to see tested in 120 or 140 sizes, leave a comment below and we're gonna go through them and pick a few, probably between five and 10 of the most popular suggestions and then test them on the new wind tunnel that we're working on setting up. Uh, subscribe for that. You can help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamersnexus, where you can also join our Discord and talk with me and the rest of the team. Or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.